I was watching. I, I don't know what it is about the off cable things. You know what I mean? I think I was watching travel today. And it was New York pizza, New York style pizza versus Chicago deep dish pizza. It went on for a half an hour. The pros and cons. And then finally, they let firemen decide. <laughs> you wouldn't think that there's that much to debate. You either like one or the other usually. Well, but what is better? That's the thing. Which one is better? New now, York. personally, I'll say this. I like both styles. I have no problem with it at all. I know you you don't even like the deep dish. No, I don't even go. It's too doughy for me. <laughs> I heard in, in one of the New York firemen called it a cake with pepperoni on it. <laughs> I think of it more of as almost like a lasagna dish. But, you, you know, the reason why it's not pizza to me is because you can't walk down the street with a slice. But I guess you don't really walk down the streets in Chicago nine months out of the year anyway eating anything because it's sub-freezing. Yeah, it just never seems like it's cooked enough for me. Like somehow they took it out of the oven way, way too quick. <laughs> and I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> if there's a busy restaurant in Chicago, they're going to do that. Why wait for the thing to be done? Now, you say that, but you've never gotten Chicago-style pizza in Chicago. That's true. So that's a big difference. You know, you're just going by what, that Uno's that's in the mall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is from Chicago, but you know how that is. It's not the same exact thing as um, eating uh, Chicago. E eating in Chicago. All right, 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. Giant Brian, you're from the Midwest. Do you care one way or the other? Um, no, in fact, I don't really like the uh, Chicago pizza because it's too, it's too much. And I, being a big guy, I like to eat, like, five or six pieces of pizza. Right. You only can eat one, and then you just got this lard dough in your stomach. Yeah, there just... is uh, a real heavy feeling. It's not like you could eat one of those, go out and play basketball no. later like you can with a real slice of pizza. You could eat New York-style pizza before basketball and after basketball, and you're feeling great. Yeah. Well, so here's how it went with the firemen, in case everybody's keeping up. Uh, New York went 10-0. They enjoy New York pizza. Hmm, <laughs> shock. <laughs> then we turn around. Chicago goes 10 0. They go big Chicago pizza. So now we're at a standstill. We don't know what to do. They took it to LA. It was 9 to 2, New York style. So that basically, it was up to the LA firemen or the people who decide. We're always waiting for the California results to come in, whether it's a presidential election or whatever. We have to wait for Cali to be tallied. They also said this. This came up. Once a month, at least once a month, Americans will eat a pizza. That seems incredible when you really think of how much pizza Americans eat. I would honestly think it would be more than that, that you would have pizza more than once a month. Oh, you would because you live alone and that's all the time for you. But once a month of any food, that's pretty strong when you think about it. Where it's taken up your, your, your dinner table. Yeah, because uh, is, uh, there's a hunk of time carved out uh, for pizza on your dinner table throughout the year. And it's a pizza per American. So that would probably still be, you know, a couple times. I mean, you take a guy like you, you're going to eat pizza, what, four, five, six times a month? Yeah. So you're taking off for other people. And then there's some guys that will even eat it every day for lunch, which really I think of it more of as a snack. When I'm in that thing where we're sitting down, it's dinner and it's pizza, I'm a little frustrated. Lunch, yes. Uh, late at night, yes. I go to someone's house and there's a pizza there, and I feel like I've been slapped in the face. I even do that when I order pizza. I'll order something else along with it so that it's just not a pizza meal. I'll get like a nice uh, sub or something to go with it, a hot sub. I just even hate the word hot sub. Maybe it's a Philly thing, <laughs> but that just seems like anti-food to me. Of course, it all gets eaten. None of it goes to waste. I don't know which one of us is doing the uh, big S word tonight. Oh, it's me. Yeah. So what else do we? I also eat uh, a lot of McGriddles. <laughs> no, you got to say it correctly because you did it. Oh, I eat a McGriddle Thanks. a morning. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? And I, what I do is if, if it's warm out like it was today, I dab my forehead with the syrup-soaked uh, bun. No, I, I thought it was a pancake or a waffle. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. You know what? I don't know if I've ever had one. I have. I thought it was fantastic. It shot up somehow with syrup. There's syrup trapped inside that thing. Mm. Like, I don't know what they're taking, a hypodermic needle and shooting it in there, but it's fantastic. Now, I haven't had the, uh, whatever the hell the Burger King deal is, the omelet thing. Yeah, the omelet breakfast sandwich. I want to try it, except for Plastic Face Burger King 
uh, completely weirds me out. The Burger King that's standing outside your window when you don't realize it, you open your windows and there he is? I put that weird Burger King as freaky. I put him right up there with the fish from that fish stick <laughs> commercial that somehow when the fish attempt to take over the earth. The fish is just sitting there groaning in a playground. It's f afraid of fish. Yeah. And then you just see people backing up from this gross fish who's out of its water, obviously. Hey, John, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, my girlfriend works at Pizza Hut. I get free, free pizza every night. Yeah, but you're getting Pizza Hut pizza. And I don't want to come across as <laughs> anti-suburb, but none of those chain pizzas to me are as good to, as having, like, real Italian people making you pizza. Oh, absolutely true. I came from a, an Italian family up in Hartford. And that there you are, eating your uh, Pizza Hut every Sell day. Out. Yeah. Well, free is free. Oh, there you go. Uh, you know, <laughs> probably next you'll get a, a job at the Fish Sticks place, and you're eating that every day. Lucky. Because free is free. <laughs> I'll give you something you can do free right now, and I don't think you'd want to do it. Hey, Tom, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, I got the big-ass word. What's that, buddy? McGriddle. There you go. There's the very slow winning cowbell. You're off to the big ass prize closet. Is that you think you're keeping the beat? That was me trying to keep the beat of life. Here, yeah. I, when I tell you you have to keep the beat with the cowbell, that's for a cowbell song. Oh. Not just for now. I know you're attempting to do well. Right. And you got yourself in a real strange position here. I'm aware of that. But you don't want to over try and start trying to keep the beat of life. That's crazy stuff. Got it. That's his very tiny, slow heartbeat that he's pumping out. You're pretty much a pizza guy every day, right? Um, I love pizza. I, I'll eat it um, for breakfast cold. I'll eat it for dinner warm. But I, I'll eat the whole pizza. There's no pizza left when I'm done. So when you go, you and your chick, right. you have to say, large for me, medium for you. Personal pan for her, large for me. <laughs> and it, and it, the more on it, the better. I want to eat. I want it to be stacked six inches tall with... Sausage, mushroom, pepperoni, everything. Sounds like you want a deep dish pizza, my friend. I don't so much like the, the dough. Yeah. I like thin crust with just piled on, wondering when I bring it to my mouth, when will it crack and it all falls on my lap. With a salad on it. Uh, so you'll never <laughs> eat it with a knife and fork? No. <laughs> don't get offended. You're the one eating food on top of it now. Now you've heard his big feelings. I would never go with a fork and knife. What if someone saw me with it? You ever uh, double up two slices at the same time? Oh, yeah. Tony Man yeah. Manero style from Saturday Night Fever? You got to. I mean, if you're in a hurry, too, you just put them together and you got a calzone. That's funny. I don't think there's a better feeling in the world than going to that refrigerator in the morning and just then remembering that there's leftover pizza in there. Uh, refrigerator? Isn't it just sitting out on the box, <laughs> sitting in the oven somewhere, and you just pop it out? <laughs> Well, mine's in the refrigerator to begin with because I like to start out cold. And the best is when you, you get it cold and the pepperoni has become one with the cheese. Right. Like you can't pull it off. You just got to eat it. This is so good. I, li I like it really, really cold. Mine's not ready until the grease turns orange. Mm. It, here's what he does. When it gets to his house, he throws it in the refrigerator. Instead of He never eats a, a hot pizza. Really? Yeah. I, I've thrown a couple slices in the freezer to try to get ready. And you know what? That doesn't work. That's just like throwing, like, it's the opposite of throwing it in the microwave to try to heat something up. Right. Because it's frozen on the edges and still warm in the middle. It's too cold on the outside. You just don't want it hot? Never. No. Never, ever. Hmm. No. Calzones, would you eat them hot? Mm, probably, but it didn't, it wouldn't have to be. Oh. There's not a lot of hot foods that I like other than soup. Soups and stews. Was that right? You'd rather have everything cold? Yeah, I like chicken cold. I'll, uh, like if I get a Big Mac or something, yeah. I'll throw that in the refrigerator and leave it for the morning until it's nice and cold. See, you're doing something dangerous, my friend, whether you know it or not. And it's probably why you end up sick so much of the time. You don't want to take hot foods and throw them in your freezer or your refrigerator. Because that brings down the temperature... And the refrigerator or the freezer and makes those other foods spoil. So a lot of times that you're sick, I bet you're eating your own spoiled food. Oh, I never thought of that. It's, it's like common sense 101. I don't know about common sense, but your mother should have taught you that. Your mother would slap you if she caught you putting something steaming hot into the refrigerator or the freezer. I've, you're going to kill yourself. I've always done that.
And I'm feeling ill now. You're always ill. That's probably one of the reasons. You're like, I got a flu going on. But what you're really doing is you're eating some kind of bad food. I've poisoned my milk or something. Yes, exactly. It's not good for the milk, butter, none of that stuff. I just hate waiting for it to get cold naturally. And what you're doing, you're getting bacteria in there. You've been eating bacteria. Oh. You know, and I try so hard to be clean. And look at me, filthy eater. Your thing is you're clean on the outside, you're disgusting inside. So your skin may be clean, but your stomach is all filled with bacteria and probably lice and a tapeworm. Oh, I mean... Dead tapeworm, because it's definitely not alive. Well, how did it die? <laughs> your disgusting stomach. The things that are in your stomach are so disgusting that they're filthy. You're totally cramping me out. No, any, uh, anybody who works in the food industry will agree with me, I believe. 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. You can't throw really hot things in your freezer or your refrigerator. I've tried other things. Like I, I, I always ask the pizza guy not to put the pizza in the sleeve. You know, that jacket that they carry it in? By the way, who invented the sleeve? The guy is a multimillionaire, I bet. Because that thing has taken over America, where now you won't see a pizza delivery guy without a sleeve. And those things didn't exist, what, 10, 15 years ago? No, no, it just used to be the box showing up at your door. Yeah. And I don't think anyone outside, of, I don't know if anyone outside of pizza has advanced on that. I order Chinese food, it just still comes in a brown paper bag and it's cartons. That's, that's fine with me. It's not like no problem. It's not like they put it in any sort of, you know, carry all that's going to keep it warm. Because they're Chinese, they don't even have cars over there. They're they're all driving the same exact bicycle. No wonder it takes so long to get it. So I'm trying to think if there's a you know chicken. I like that cold. You like it, but you don't. Well, you don't cook chicken, right? No, but no. Like you, if I got KFC or something like that, you would throw it in the fridge first. Yeah. Disgusting. And then it's always better like the next day. After what about it's your really potatoes? Cold. Your mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes, I like that warm with the gravy on them. Vegetables? That's a warm food. Vegetables? Vegetables I like cold. It can't be good for you. You're eating everything cold in life. I've been known to, you know, like that those frozen packages of broccoli or mixed vegetables, try to cook those. Yeah. I'll just eat them frozen. You know what you ought to do? You ought to get on that raw diet. You'd be happier there. You're just eating everything raw. All your vegetables are raw. You're eating fruits. Nothing is cooked. That, then you'd be happy. That's perfect for me. Yeah. How are you going to have it cold? Okay. An ice cream diet would be really good for me. All you really need to do is uh, head on over to, like, just a fruit stand. That's all you're going to eat from now on. You're on a raw diet. Hey, Rob, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Ronnie, from Philadelphia, Tacanelli is the only pizza to eat. Well, you know, but the the truth is about Philadelphia, and they do have great pizza, it's still done in the New York style. Yeah, but it's still it's still better than the stuff they got down here. First of all, I don't even like hearing the word subs. If you're talking about hoagies... Philadelphia beats hoagies uh, any part of the country, and that's known. Same oh, yeah. as cheesesteaks. That's no known. Chicken. But There's when no you're style. really saying the, the pizza style, Philly adopted that from New Yorkers, New Yorkers who came down to Philly. I enjoy it. I like it. But yeah, I, gotta... I know. I don't want you to discuss the history of food if you don't know what you're talking about, though, my friend. I mean, it's great that you're a homer. I'm all for it. It's great to be proud of your town. He loves that Liberty Bell. But at the same time, if you're acting like Philadelphia... Invent a pizza, then I gotta say no. I'm sorry, it didn't happen that way. And I know this because I happen to watch the Travel Channel. I'm not gonna lie to you. A lot of people get the feeling, sir, when they find out something that they've eaten all their life didn't come out of their hometown. Well, I mean, there's not really too many places that can say, "Here's my real hometown food." You know, in most places, can't say that. You know, if you go to like San Francisco, the sourdough bread's there. You can get it other places, but really, the best comes from there. But, you know, if you start to talk about other places, they don't know, you know, what comes from Detroit. Who knows? It's a big town. I'm sure it's got nice things about it. But don't act like some kind of food comes out of there. You would think they would have a food. Now, you take a, a town like Buffalo, not as big. I'll always give them the credit for the uh, rings, uh, the wings, and I'll even give them for that really good cheese bread. All right, here's uh, Tom. Tom, you're on Renefez. Hey, Tom. Hello. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, I'm just 
I, I'm asking you guys, please, man. I'm in, stuck in my car, and I'm starving now. I'm starving, too. I'm out of my mind starving. I can't get any food. I'm having to pull over and stop and get a pizza. Now, um, where are you at exactly? Because really, are you in Northern Virginia? No, I'm actually in D.C. Because, hmm. well, you know what? You're just across the river. I'd recommend Five Guys for you tonight. If you're really going to look local food, you got to go Five Guys. Can I'm you gonna say- have to call Mario's Pizza. They're- they are the best pizza in Washington, D.C. Yes. If you feel that way, I got more power to you, my friend. I'm not very familiar with the pizza. Do you know him, Fuzz? No, I don't know Mario's. No, what are you getting? Lido's. I would say his best. And then you throw it completely in a freezer. You go from <laughs> your house, from that oven, into a freezer. That one's hard to fit in a freezer. Will, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, Fez, um, why don't you just cut out the middleman and get the frozen French bread pizzas? Just eat them raw. Why don't you do that, Fez? You want you just open up a, a thing of frozen pizza, and not want it like a popsicle. I've never had a good grocer's freezer pizza. I I think it's part of the process of where it has to be piping hot and then go to cold. I think that's all part of the process to lock in the frozen flavor. See, I don't think you are there. I think when you're talking about a giant Brian style, which is having it for breakfast, there is something to be said about it sitting overnight. But just go going into the freezer. I don't think you're getting that same thing. That, And I'm not sure. I'm not a chef. But I wouldn't thank you for taking my pizza, throw it in the freezer, and then hand it to me and tell me that was cold. Hey, Jenny, you're on Run of Fez. Hi. Um, first of all, it's really, really disgusting that he does that with his food. Yeah. Um, I'm right here. Food. You can talk to me. <laughs> what? Oh, you're there. Yeah. We never know when you're here or whether you've taken a little break and went away for a little while. There you go. But I don't think it's so much like that he's doing that with his food that makes him sick, but the fact that he's eating a bunch of crap. <laughs> Bad for you stuff. Well, here's the problem. Here's Fez's problem. He's a single guy, never took a bride, and he doesn't cook. He doesn't like cooking. The idea of cooking, foreign to you. Very foreign to me. A, it makes a huge mess, yeah. and I hate a mess to clean up. Uh, B, I'm usually so hungry by the time I start cooking right. that I just can't wait for the process to do it right. All right, let, let me put it this way. Let's suppose that you were on your way to work, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you wouldn't immediately go, wait, I need clean clothes. I got to throw in a load of wash. No, you understand that you have to have some discipline in your life. The thing about cooking is like it's a fun discipline. It feels great to cook. I don't know why more people don't like to do it. You cook anything at all, Brian? Oh, yeah. Now that the Wegmans opened, I'm there every weekend. I make my own meals. Like what? Like I made a stuffed pork chop on Saturday night, and then I filleted salmon on Sunday. All right. So you're getting it filleted from them. You're getting it stuffed, and you're following the things. Yeah. Excellent. I'm very, very proud of you. And I cut up vegetables, you know, make my own mashed potatoes. I'm very, very proud of you. And you know what? Here's the good thing here, too, because you're taking a little more pride in it. Because you're, pride, you're proud of the quality. Where you, on the other hand, Fez, you're just going over and grabbing a bucket of chicken. You have no pride in the quality of it, so you throw it in the freezer. And I don't woof it down either. You're, I'm yeah. so proud of it, I take a bite, and I'm like, this is so good. I can't believe I made this. I know. And then take another bite. It, this is the difference between men and women. And this is why men are the uh, great chefs. When a man cooks a meal... He demands that the woman sits and talks about it through the entire <laughs> meal. If she makes the meal, the guy will say, mm, good, and keep going. If she gets that, the man makes the meal. He's like, do you taste the paprika that I, I mean, I just gave it a hit. When I grill, and I do it most uh, every night, we're forced to talk about it constantly. And the kids, everybody. And then the neighbors, they'll come over. What are you doing? I go, just watch. And I pretend I'm on the food network. Um, the woman, I'm going like this. It seems like a uh, basket. This is going to keep your vegetables from falling in. And my chick's like, what's going on out there? I go, shh, please. We're filming. I'm putting on a class. <laughs> right now, I'm putting on a class. But that is funny, and that's why it's good for you. And now you like doing the shopping, right? You like finding a nice piece of meat. I love it. Look for yeah. the meat. Look for the vegetables. It's great. Can't beat it. It is. It's fantastic. You, on the other hand, Fez, you, you take no pride in yours. Well, and the other thing is, anytime I've tried to cook, it's never turned out well. So it just sours me on the whole experience. I know I'm not supposed to be a great chef overnight. Well, you can be now. There's enough things out there. It's not the 1800s. You see, Giant Brian has done it because he went and got good uh, he got good quality stuff to cook. The problem with, with most people, like, they're going, 
oh, I'm going to try to make this, uh, I'm going to try to grill this steak. They go to some, uh, you know, discount supermarket. They're buying the discount uh, steaks, and they're wondering why it's coming out tasting like A. Not your problem, Fez. You haven't really taken the time. I have to quit eating A. <laughs> I feel like you're mocking me. I feel like instead of sitting here learning, you're mocking me. All right, 866-277-4969. Matty Fridays writes in, Fez, and says, if you like, I'll deliver uh, two boots to you in D.C. Two boots pizza. You will love this one, Brian. It's the two boots. It's Italy and it's Louisiana. And they got slices of pizza up there with all different kinds of things on it that would kill you. Oh, I love it. I love I almost, anything stacked. I was so happy in there. At one point, I laid down on the floor. I literally <laughs> laid down on the floor, and I held on to the cook's foot. I just held on to it. And their crust is so good. What's it called again? Two Boots. Two Boots. Yeah. There's one in uh, 30 Rock, and I think the original one is uh, down in the village. Mm. And I, I mean, people are lined up at night. Two Boots. Yes, two boots. Instead of doing what you're doing, going to Ray's original famous pizza. There was actually this thing that I watched. There was a whole thing of how that cluster F happened. Why every time you go to New York, there's all these Ray's pizzas, and they're calling themselves original, and not one of them is Ray. This thing goes back like 50 years of the name being bandied about. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. When we uh, get back, uh, Brian and I are going to teach Fez how to make a nice floral arrangement and make his house look a little more cheery. <laughs> nice. The Ron and Fez Show. <laughs> 